Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the book snob book tag. Let's try and fix my hat so I don't look too mental. I, I'm wearing it inside to keep my hair out of my face. I was tagged to do this by Jason at Jason's Weird Reads, and it was created by Tia and All The Books. Both great channels, I will link to them both below, so be sure to check them out. There are seven questions, I'm going to answer them, and then I'm going to tag some people at the end. So, question one, adaptation snob. Do you always read the book before you see the movie? Uh, I try to. I'm sure there are cases where I haven't, or sometimes like, uh, like for example, I watched To All the Boys I've Loved Before because I just know I, I don't. It's so low on my list of books that I will ever get to that I doubt I'll ever read it, unless like I don't know, it's the only book I have to hand or something. And as soon as I don't own it as well, you know. So I was like, well, it's a genre I wouldn't really normally read. It's sort of a, you know, YA or whatever as well. Uh, like YA romance. So uh, I'm not going to read it. But I'll, I don't mind watching the odd rom-com, you know. And actually I did enjoy the movie. But as a general rule, if I know, especially if I know something's about to be adapted, I'll try and read it first. So I did that with like Bird Box, Horns of Hill, Hill House. Uh, I don't know. Accidentally have done it with Nosferatu, I think, because there's a new pilot or something of that that's been released I don't know I haven't watched it to be honest I don't particularly care for adaptations anyway in terms of like what I like to watch I like documentaries preferably a documentary series if not you know documentary movies uh, I just like to learn stuff when I'm watching stuff and to be honest I mostly watch YouTube anyway question number two format snob you can only choose one format in which to read books for the rest of your life which one do you choose? Physical books, ebooks, or audiobooks? Obviously physical books. I mean, it makes up 95% of my reading, I would say. I never read ebooks. I do listen to audiobooks, but only for rereads. So if I could only have audiobooks, I would only ever reread books, which would be a shame. So yeah, physical books, pretty easy one. And I think most people will probably say that as well. Question number three, ship snob. Would you date or marry a non-reader? Uh, I mean, historically, I guess I have done. I think, every, like, or the majority of, like, you know, people I've been in relationships with, they've been kind of casual readers, maybe a book a month at max. My current girlfriend probably reads three to five books a month or something. Uh, to be honest, it, it doesn't really bother me. To be honest, it seems to me as though most people don't actually read that much. I, d I just don't, I mean, as, as much as books are, and writing are a huge part of my life, like, you know, I... I I don't think that you have to have all this stuff in common with somebody. Sure, it's great, you know, but I'm sure even if I were to marry a non-reader, we'd talk about music or about life or whatever, you know? Question number four, genre snob. You have to ditch one genre, never to be read again for the rest of your life. Which one do you ditch? So, romance springs to mind. Uh, paranormal romance? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, YA, I, I guess? I, although that's not a genre. I don't really read by genre anyway. Erotic thriller maybe? Although I'd rather read erotic thrillers than romance. So I guess it's romance. But then romance is one of those genres where, you know, romance and horror are kind of the two genres that they can kind of creep into other books without changing the genre. So you can have horror in a thriller or whatever, and you can have romance in whatever, a fantasy, that sort of thing. But if you have fantasy in a thriller, suddenly it's a fantasy novel, you know? Yeah, I can't think of a better one than that. Um, maybe business non-fiction, just because I've read so much of it at this point. And I never learn anything from it, because it's always, like, <laughs> it just goes over the basics, I guess. Like, marketing books, for example. It's like, well, I'm not learning anything here. Question number five, uber genre snob. You can only choose to read from one genre for the rest of your life. Which genre do you choose? I, again, I guess it's not really a genre, but classics or modern classics. Uh, but if I can't have that, I don't know what's even on my, like my list is so different. You know, I read such a, a, a range of stuff. Uh, maybe mystery. I don't know. I think I'd get bored of that quite quickly. Horror. But again, I'd get bored of it quite quickly. Uh, or, or to cheat and you could have nonfiction, which again, isn't really a genre. I don't know. I don't really understand genres I guess I don't, they seem like quite an arbitrary way of grouping things so I don't know we're going I'm gonna say like yeah modern classics I guess question number six community snob which genre do you think receives the most snobbery from the bookish community probably YA again if you're counting that as a genre 
Uh, I didn't realise there were going to be so many questions about genres in this tag, so I'm, I'm kind of thrown. But yeah, there's lots of like, there's snobbery both sides, like YA readers towards anything that isn't YA, and then non-YA readers towards YA. It's a valid art form, so is everything else, you know? Failing that, I guess romance, but I don't, I mean, I don't like romance, but I don't see much snobbery towards it. I mean, there are like some thriving romance booktube channels. I never see like any negativity there or anything like that. I, again, it's a valid genre, so I don't know. Question number seven, snobbery recipient. Have you ever been snubbed for something that you have been reading or for reading in general? Yeah, I guess so at school. I used to get bullied a lot because in English, the English teacher made us, we had to write these reviews for every book that we read. And I was reading about as much as I read now, but obviously shorter books and stuff. But there were times when it'd be like, over the weekend, I'd have to write eight book reviews for the English lesson. And then even the teacher then used to like, tell me like, oh, like you read like too much. And it's like, you're an English teacher, mate. Like, can I, and I, you know, it was just madness that I had to keep writing these things. And then for the other kids in the class, they just didn't read books because it meant that they didn't have to do this extra homework. Whereas for me, it was like, well, this extra homework is the price I have to pay for reading books. It was very odd. Uh, I've had people come up to me on the bus and be like, oh, like, why are you reading? And uh, it's like the old Bill Hicks thing where he's like a cocktail waitress went up to him and said, what are you reading for? And he was like, that's an interesting question. Not what are you reading? What are you reading for? His like reply was, well, I, I guess it's so I don't become a fucking cocktail waitress. <laughs> no offense to anyone who's a cocktail waitress. I feel like this has just been me complaining. I'm in a complaining mood today. That's also the end of the questions. So yeah, rant, rant tag, I guess. I also hate it when people tag things as rants, but you get kind of this inverse snobbery as well, where if people love a book and you don't, they're like, oh, well, there must be something wrong with you. And it's like, no, no, I, I just didn't like the book. But then basically got obsessed with this girl and she got like a fiance and he asked like his parents for advice. So I think his dad for advice. And his dad was like, oh yeah, just, you know, make her see that she should fall in love with you. And it's like, that's terrible advice. You're trying to get her to basically to dump her fiance to go out with this little kid who was an asshole as well. So uh, I'm going to tag some people. I'm going to do what I normally do. The, my computer screen is behind the camera, so I'm having to lean over like this to see. All right, I'm going to tag Pints and Paperbacks. Check out his channel as well, by the way. He's relatively new and needs a bit of support. Big Hard Books and Classics, Charles Heathcote, and Jaden Reads, who you should also check out because she's also a new channel who could use a little bit of support. So there we have it. That is my take on the book snob book tag. Hopefully I didn't come across as too much of a book snob. This is what a book snob is when they leave comments like, I feel sorry for you. You have no taste in the real literature. Poor creature. That's when you're a book snob, when you leave comments like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments. I don't know. Let me know if you've done this tag. And if so, I will go through and check it out and have a, have a little goosey gander at your channel. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.